Hey there, it's John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to the special edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, where we're going to focus solely on the modern market. We're going to look at the top 10 hot cards this week in modern. We're going to look at the top 10 cold cards this week in modern, and we're going to talk about how the information revealed last week as far as what is going to be in Modern Masters 2017 has gone ahead and affected the market in both cards that have been reprinted, as well as, and maybe more importantly in some cases, cards that have not been reprinted. So first off, a couple quick notes about this video. We're not going to talk about Modern Masters 2017 individual prices at this point because the singles market in a pre-release time period can be very volatile. And I don't want to put out any misinformation that could change within hours or minutes. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the older counterparts of these cards today. And then later on, when we get closer to the set release or when the set releases, I will do a follow-up market watch where we look at specifically Modern Masters 2017 values, but that will be for another day. Secondly, I didn't want to put this video out for a few days after the full set reveal, which was Friday, just because the market was super volatile. And if you followed it at all, you know what I mean. There's been drastic spikes and back down, back up again with a lot of the cards. So I wanted to wait till it looked like things were starting to stabilize. And as of yesterday afternoon, I started to feel a little more comfortable that cards are starting to find their middle ground. So you'll notice that when we start looking at what the values have done, especially over the last like 24 to 48 hours. Quickly before we get started, if you check out the description below, you'll find a couple ways to help support us. One is the Amazon affiliate store. If you make any purchases through any of those links, a small percentage will come back to help support the channel. Always helpful. Secondly, there's our Patreon page. So check that out. We're actually very close to our next goal, which is a, another token. Check that out. All right, let's get into the cards. So we're going to start off with the top 10 cards that have lost value this week. And you can pretty much imagine what you're going to see here. A lot of cards that are reprinted in Modern Masters 2017. Coming in at number 10 is Death Shadow. Down $2.65 to 1331. This card has some interesting recent history. Over the last few weeks, it has been very popular. It did great in a pair of GPs a few weeks ago. It won GP Vancouver. And because of that, there's been a highlighted spotlight on this card recently, which caused it to start to spike pretty hard, as you can see from the graph here. But middle of last week, we found out that it was going to be part of Modern Masters 2017 as a rare, and all of a sudden the price started to go down. But something interesting happened over the last couple of days. The value is starting to go back up again even though we know more cards are going to enter the marketplace very very soon it just goes to show you how popular this deck and this card is right now this will start to stabilize now and again as more packs get opened in a few weeks and folks start actually getting their product this will start to go down and i think it's going to go down pretty quick at that point but right now at least for the time being this will easily stick around that 13 14 dollar mark Coming in at number nine is Blood Moon. Today we're going to look at, in particular, the Modern Masters version as well as the ninth edition version. Modern Masters down two dollars and forty cents to forty one fifty nine. The ninth edition version down three dollars and sixteen cents to thirty eight seventy six. Another card that is, of course, going to be in Modern Masters, and you can see from the graph here, this one caught some folks by surprise. I think a lot of people were not speculating that this card was going to show up. And when it did, you saw a pretty drastic drop in its value, as you can see from the graph here. But it is starting to stabilize and slow down right now. And again, I think it's going to be relatively steady, at least until more packs get open. The big question hanging out there is how big is the shipment of Modern Masters going to be? We know the initial wave is probably going to be pretty comparable to what we saw from Eternal Masters and even Modern Masters 2015. However, the big question is how big is the second wave going to be and when's the second wave going to come? We saw with Eternal Masters, the second wave came really, really late. It came in December. With Modern Masters 2015, it came pretty much right after the first wave. And again, we don't know how big that second wave is going to be. I'm speculating it's going to be at least as big as Eternal Masters, which was pretty significant for a limited product, or maybe even a little more than that. So I guess we kind of wait and see, but that's the question mark that's hanging out there for a lot of folks, especially with these cards that are being reprinted at rare. Blood Moon has the potential to actually lose a lot more value depending on how big that second wave of product is. Coming in at number eight, Lenvala Keeper of Silence, down $3.26 this week to $36.98. Of course, she's being reprinted as a mythic, which means she's not hemorrhaging value as much as maybe a card that is being reprinted at rare. But this one's unique because you don't see a lot of copies of Linvala out there in modern. 
once in a while you'll see her show up in like the Obzon evolution deck but it's just not a very popular deck right now and mostly her price was driven by commander and commander players only need one copy of the card so you can see already this card is taking a pretty drastic downswing and i think it's going to keep going down even though it's a mythic this is one of those cards that players really want but they don't need four of or anything like that in most cases so i do think this is going to continue to decline over time Coming in at number seven is our first fetch land of the day. It's Arid Mesa, down 352 to 4609. And a quick spoiler, we're actually going to see four out of the five fetch lands on this list. <laughs> Marsh Flats didn't make the list. It was just short. It is losing value, but it had the lowest value of all of them. So it's taking the smallest hit, if that makes sense. As far as the cards themselves go, I mean, they're all being reprinted at rare. And they have already taken a hit because of that news. However... The fact of the matter is there's still a really high demand around these cards. You can see from the graph here, they have started to stabilize. In this case, Arid Mesa has started to stabilize a little bit. So I don't see these completely crashing out and losing value. Once more packs get open, they will decline more, right? And I think players are going to start to realize, hey, I can get a hold of these. In some cases, they could be affordable, and they will try to pick them up. I don't see them going down to the point where the cons fetch lands are, quite honestly, just because they printed so many of those, even though it is, at this point, a couple of years ago. But I do see them getting closer. I can see these cards being between $20 and $40, maybe a little cheaper even for Marsh Flats, once the full supply is out there in circulation. Coming in at number six, another fetch land, it's Verdant Catacombs. This time it's down 355 to 5940, and you kind of see the same trend as we saw with Arid Mesa, but maybe a little more solid. This one has stabilized for a longer period of time at this point. Coming in at number five, it's another fetch land, Misty Rainforest, down $4.16 to $45.12. And again, you can see this one actually has already started to go up a little bit in value since they bottomed out. Coming in at number four is Cavern of Souls, down 459 to 4936. Now this one's interesting because we know it's being reprinted, but it is being reprinted at the mythic level, unlike the other lands we just looked at. So that's going to help this one hold its value at least a little bit more. You can see once the announcement happened, it did decline quite a bit, but it has quickly stabilized. And you're going to notice that with a lot of the cards that are being reprinted at mythic. Again, when packs get open, this will go down some more. But it is holding relatively stable. Again, there's a huge demand around this card. It's not a card that you see in every deck, but the decks that want it usually want four ofs. And there's a lot of players that enjoy playing these style of decks, whether they be merfolk or other types of tribal. Coming in number three, our final fetch land of the day, Scalding Tarn, down 607 to 6917. And you can see the graph looks pretty similar to the others. Coming in at number two, Liliana of the Val, down 675 to 8521. She's an interesting case because people were almost certain she was going to be in the set for quite some time. And she was one of my three cards I picked as a lock to be in the set. I chose her as well as Abrupt Decay for the rare and Snapcaster Mage, which I kind of thought they would shift to Mythic, but hoping they didn't, but of course they did. <laughs> so anyway, Liliana, she has been at one time a $100 card, maybe even a little more than that. Since then, a few things happened. I mean, she had the promo release version of her that came out that helped her steady a little bit. Secondly, a lot of folks just kind of expected her to be in the set. So her value sort of stayed even and even started to decline recently. And even though she's seeing a pretty sharp decline right now, you can tell by her graph, she's not like bottoming out. She's not going down very quickly. And I think that's just because people have been preparing this for a while now. No one was surprised by this one. The big sellers knew this was coming and they had already adjusted prices and have been adjusting prices for this for a little while. So you don't see a big drop with her, but it's at least a nice drop and makes her a little more affordable. And again, she'll go down some more when more packs get open, but at least for right now, I think she's going to stay relatively steady. And coming in at number one, one of the biggest cards of modern right now, Tarmogoyf. Future Sight version down 347 to 13646 with the Modern Masters 2015 version down 702 to 112.36. Here's the power of Tarmogoyf. We know Tarmogoyf is going to be reprinted. That did catch a lot of people by surprise. You can kind of see that in the graph here, that it had a drastic downtick a few days back. Some folks thought it might be there. Others were, I think, a little surprised by the news because it was in the previous two. 
But here's the deal with this card. I mean, having the Future Sight version below 140, that's actually pretty big for this card. And having even the Modern Masters 2015 version down below 120 is a pretty big deal. As a matter of fact, about 24 hours ago or so, there were some of these for sale around $100. You might even be able to find some deals like that if you look at this point. But it is starting to come back up already. And again, that's because the cards just see so much play. It's just so popular. And once it hit the $100 mark, a lot of folks decided to open their wallet and pick up a copy or two. And prices started going back up again already. So that's Tarmogoyf for you. The demand is just so high that even when you pour more copies in, especially if you don't commit to rare and you just keep reprinting this at Mythic, seems to hold its value at least in the low 100s. Now, I am hoping that once packs get opened in a few weeks that this could again dip to 100 or below, at least for a short period of time. But it won't stay there as product starts to dry up over time and more people get involved into modern because of things like this set release <laughs> and there's going to be a whole new group of people interested in picking up these cards i expect the price to just kind of go back to almost where it was over the next probably six months to a year all right, let's move on to the top 10 cards that have gained value this week. And like I mentioned at the top of the show, these are going to be cards that, of course, did not see a reprint in Modern Masters. Now, what's awkward about a lot of these cards is we don't know when they're going to be reprinted again for a number of reasons. First off, some of them have too high of a value to show up in things like dual decks or commander decks, and Wizards will steer away from putting too much value into those products because resellers will pick those up and get them out of the hands of players, which can be very bad for really the purpose of those products, which is to grow the casual market. And you won't see a lot of cards that are on this list in those products just simply for that reason. So that restricts them down to maybe an Eternal Masters set, another two years to wait for like another Modern Masters, maybe a From the Vault or something like that, perhaps a Conspiracy-esque set, but it does really limit the times that Wizards has a chance to reprint this, which means a lot of folks are just going to bite the bullet, buy the singles now, and even if it costs a little more, they're just going to do it, which is going to cause some inflation. So let's look at number 10. And that's Ancestral Vision, up 342 to 4988. And this is a perfect example of what I was talking about. When the first Modern Masters came out, they did have a suspend theme in that set. However, the card was banned at that time. So it couldn't be in that set. And now you could have maybe tossed it in Modern Masters 2017. But really, is Wizards going to do that without a suspend theme behind it? Probably not, at least from what we've seen in the past, right? It was reprinted in a dual deck at one point, but that ship's kind of sailed because the value is too high now. You're not going to see this for reasons I mentioned a few moments ago in Commander or Dual Decks. Maybe a Conspiracy-esque set in the future, or perhaps a From the Vault, but a From the Vault won't really do a whole lot to help the value or get more copies in a player's hands. So it's really restricted now as to where Wizards is going to find a place to reprint this. It gets very difficult as time goes on. And because of that, and you can see that already from the graph, this card is going to continue to go up in time. It's played in a lot of different control decks right now in Modern, not to mention some other formats. It's very popular. This will become a very expensive card. Coming in at number nine is Bloom Tender, up 383 to 3325. Another card with unique history. A few months back, this card spiked pretty hard, as you can see here, because a Saffron Olive actually showcased this in a brew, and a modern brew, as a matter of fact. And it just caught a lot of people's attention. A lot of folks started picking up these cards to try to put together that deck or play around with this card a little bit. And it never crossed over into any sort of top-tier deck or anything like that, as a matter of fact. You don't really see any of them played right now in Modern. Because of that, the value was going down recently. But it spiked again this past week, and I think it really has more to do with Commander. I mean, this was always a solid, solid Commander card. But I noticed, for whatever reason, there's a lot of submitted Commander decks this week on places like MTG Goldfish that are using this card. So it just might be an increased focus on it temporarily but i do think this will stabilize a little bit it's not a card that's going to lose value though because it is very popular in commander and it's from eventide and it's never seen a reprint and sometimes it's really hard to get your hands on some of those eventide rares coming in at number eight engineered explosives from fifth dawn up three dollars and 86 cents to 52.99 all right so we know modern masters 2017 didn't have much of a artifact theme to it right so it begs the question cards like this cards like chalice of the void which we're going to see in a few minutes cards like ether vial which didn't quite make the list today but is going up in value where are we going to see these cards they're very important cards i mean ether vial 
is a card that is not for every deck, but shows up in a lot of very popular decks. Uh, cards like this one and Chalice of the Void are great sideboard cards in multiple formats. So when's our opportunity to see these things reprinted again? And again, I'm thinking something aside from a From the Vault, but uh, maybe maybe a conspiracy style set that could come out some summer. Uh, but if not, you wait at least a year for Eternal Masters, another two years for Modern Masters. This card's insanely popular. I mean, just look at the graph here. It's been going up. It's going to keep going up. And nothing's going to change if this doesn't get reprinted. Another card that potentially has a lot of value coming in the future. Dark Confidant is number seven, and this is up $4.27 this week to $43.96. And of course, this is the Ravnica version we're looking at here. And this is another card that's very popular right now. I mean, Jun decks, they kind of slowed down for a little while in the meta, but they definitely have picked up recently. And with that, this card is picked up. And you can see, especially once we realize it's not going to be in the set, it spiked pretty hard. It has stabilized quite a bit since then, and I think it's really found its home right now where its current price point's at, at least for a little while. Uh, but again, over time, with no reprint, this is another card that's going to continue to go up in value. And like I said earlier, you have to take into account Modern Masters, not only does it give us great reprints and kind of almost put cards on quote-unquote sale for a little while, but it also brings a lot of new people into the format, which increases the demand for a lot of these cards, especially the ones that have not had a recent reprint. All right, coming in at number six, maybe one of the bigger surprises of a card that was not included in the set for me is Noble High Arc of $5.60 to $61.01. This is for the Modern Masters 2015 version of the card this week. And here's the deal. This card, and I would say Kitchen Finks, may be the two biggest omissions from the set. I do have a theory, though, that we're going to see Kitchen Finks in Amonkhet or Hour of Devastation. The reason I say that is because there was a leak a few weeks back where there was a picture of the Planeswalker decks, and you could read part of the Planeswalker cards, and there was a minus one, minus one mechanic there. So I feel like we're going to see that mechanic show up in the next block, and if that's the case, we could very well see Persist come back and Kitchen Finks. So I'm kind of hoping anyway. Noble Hierarch, though, I don't know where we're going to see that. Again, maybe Eternal Masters, maybe a conspiracy type set in the summer, but I don't know where else they're going to put this card. And again, it's just another one of those cards that is a key staple, not just in modern, but in other formats too. Legacy, Vintage, it shows up everywhere. And you can see the price point here. It's been climbing, 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 and it's just going to keep climbing. Coming in at number five, I mentioned this one earlier, Chalice of the Void, the Meriden version up $6.55 this week to $68.99. I don't really have anything new to say about it. Again, just where are we going to see this card? Uh, this card spiked really hard about three weeks, a month ago now, just because a lot of folks were looking for ways to counter the Pure Steel Paladin decks, which were very popular, at least on Magic Online, and there was a lot of buzz around them. The deck didn't quite pan out, and because of that, you started to see this card go back down a little bit. But once everyone realized that wasn't going to be a Modern Masters, guess what? It started going back up again. Great sideboard card, fantastic, not only in this format, but Legacy. And it does see a lot of vintage play, too, even though it is restricted there. Coming in at number four, Merchant Scroll. All right. So two versions of this card spiked pretty hard this week. The 8th edition version up $6.06 to $19.97, with the Homelands version going up $7.09 to $15.97. That's a phrase I did not think I'd be saying anytime soon in a market watch, the Homelands version. <laughs> so yes, there's a Homelands card that is worth more than $15 technically right now. As a matter of fact, this card spiked super hard yesterday, and even about 24 hours ago, it was over $20. Now you can see from the curve here that it quickly started to stabilize back down. Here's the deal though. This card does see modern play and it's in a Is It Storm deck that actually has had a lot of success on Magic Online over the last week or so. And a lot of people are trying to put this deck together all at the same time. And again, of course, it's a card that wasn't in Modern Masters. So a lot of folks went out yesterday to try to pick it up. It spiked so hard so fast. As a matter of fact, at one point yesterday, the 8th edition version was over $20 and the Homelands version was still only at $4 because the market just couldn't catch up fast enough. <laughs> so eventually it Everything stabilized a little bit. Both cards are kind of comparable now, and they're a little closer to the $15 mark, which is, I think, a little more of a fair price. 
But this was a maybe overlooked card for a long time that was very, very cheap, very affordable, that is no longer overlooked. I don't really feel like this is a buyout, at least not in bulk anyway. I mean, there might be some collectors jumping on once they saw the spike happen, but I really think it was due to its popularity on Magic Online and a lot of folks just going to the marketplace. And since this wasn't a card that wasn't on a lot of people's radars, marketplaces didn't have a lot of them initially, and they started to sell out, and I think it created a panic. The card will continue to snap back a little bit more, I think, but it's not going to go down nearly as low as it was before. Coming in at number three, Through the Breach, up $14.42 this week to $57.50. Well, here's what happens when a big modern staple does not get reprinted in any of the modern master sets. <laughs> and you know that it's going to be a while before it does see a reprint. Again, I didn't think we'd see it this time around because of the splice onto Arcane mechanic, which they use quite extensively in the first Modern Masters, but didn't choose to reprint it at that point. So I didn't really think they would try to throw it in this one necessarily. The question is, when do you reprint this card? Again, it has spiked pretty hard. It has snapped back a little bit since we found out it wasn't going to be in the set, and I do think it will continue to snap back a little more. But again, it's not going to go back down to where it was. Coming in at number two, this one's a big one. Karn Liberated, the new Phyrexia version up $8.30 to $73, with the Modern Masters 2015 version up $15.63 this week to $69. 99. Karn is the real deal and another card players are asking when are we going to see this again? If it wasn't in Modern Masters, where can this possibly show up? This card is incredibly popular due to the fact that Tron's doing real well in the meta too right now. Once Gataxian Pro got banned, a lot of folks went to mid-range decks. Tron is great against mid-range decks, so you see a lot of folks playing with these cards. Eldrazi Tron is a newer version of the deck that's recently emerged. It's very popular. Popular fan favorite deck that's doing well competitively. The key card in it, guess what, is skyrocketing right now. And we don't know when this is going to be reprinted. Now, if you look at the graph, this has not started to snap back yet from its spike. It will snap back a little bit. I have no doubt. But after that, it's going to keep climbing and climbing over time until we find a place to reprint this. And finally, coming in at number one, pretty big card. And we're back to that Shadow Moor block again. Fulminator Mage, Modern Masters 2015 version up $15.73 this week to $33.99, with Shadowmoor going up $19.99 to $39.97. Again, another card that was not reprinted, a great sideboard card, shows up in a lot of big decks like Jund, for example. And because of that, guess what? This thing is spiking. And again, a lot of these older rares from that time period, Shadowmoor, Eventide, Lorwyn, and Morningtide even, there was a very low print run that was during the recession in the States. So there weren't as many of these things printed as other sets. So sometimes it's hard. Now this did get a reprint luckily in Modern Masters 2015, or I wouldn't want to imagine what the value would be of this card at this point. But really that wasn't enough to keep this thing stable. You can see from the graph here, this card too has not really started to see its snapback yet. So it will snap back. And I have no doubt over the next week or so, this will start to come down a little bit more. But again, it won't go back down to where it was. And then over time, it will slowly build more value if it doesn't see a reprint somewhere. Having said that, those are the cards for today. And that is the Market Watch. Now we're going to be back Saturday with our regular edition of the Market Watch. We're going to look into some of the other formats as well, like Standard and Legacy. We'll also update you on what's happening in Modern in a few days. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.